So thank you, Adria, for your introduction. As, and as you have said, um, I would like to talk about asymmetric tension wormholes in part in F of R. And this is a project or a work that we are going to submit in archive in the next days. So it's about to be published. And well, the main motivation to consider this type of objects is because they can lead to qualitative new predictions of these compact objects beyond general relativity. And this is so because having an asymmetric traversable wormholes will um, lead to have an effective potential of this kind. And therefore, uh, no geodesics will see a different maximum potential in each side of the wormhole throat, which is depicted here with this x sub zero. The key point is that in modified gravity, we can have this wormhole held by positive matter sources. But with general relativity, they need to be held by exotic matter sources. So the main aim of this. Sorry, Mexico, story... interrupt you, but I don't think the slides are passing uh, from. Oh. Oh. Uh, okay. So I will try to share it in another way. Mm -mm -mm. Yep. Perhaps all the screen. Well, <laughs> now you can see it. The change. Okay, for me it works. Okay. Okay. Well, now I cannot see the message. So. <laughs> okay. So I mean, you mean the chat, the the messages in the chat? Yeah. Okay, I think we, we, we can, if everybody, if anybody has any question, please write it down and then ask it at the end because uh, the speaker is not able to read the, the messages okay. in the chat. So, please go on. So, this is what I was talking about. This effective potential so you can see the new geodesics is different on each side of the wormhole road. And this will lead that, for example, depending on the impact parameter of the um, light rays, they can bounce due to this um, effective potential here or this one. And this leads to double shadows. And this is the qualitative new predictions that we cannot have in general relativity, but yes, in modified gravity. So in order to have um, this one hole, we have to fulfill this junction conditions in part in F of R. And here I have written the important ones. The first one is that uh, this continuous across the junction of the trace of the stress energy tensor of each main fold has to be zero. And that the uh, stress energy tensor on the shell has to be also traceless. If you want to have more details, you can go to this paper here of Gonzalo and Diego that is explained in detail. Now, the other conditions that it's important to us is this one here, which relates the extrinsic curvature with the energy density. And in fact, what we will have with this equation is a relation between the radius of the shell and the energy density. Finally, from the Bianchi identities on the shell and these uh, conditions here, we can have that the energy density has to fulfill this equation number three. So the easier way to uh, build this type of wormholes is by matching, for example, uh, sparse space times and razor nostrum. Here we will have the sparse shift, here the razor nostrum, and the only thing that we do is cut at some R sub zero and plug it. So the previous junction conditions uh, can be written as here in equation number four once we have substituted the extrinsic curvature of the sparse shift space time and the razor nostrum. And this parameter gamma contains some constant and the sign of the energy density. And therefore, when this gamma is positive, we will have that the wormhole is um, held by 
positive matter sources. Now, expanding one, isolating this second time derivative of the radius of the shell around an assumed equilibrium point, this leads to this equation number five. And since we want to have bounded perturbations, this means that this C sub one um, coefficient is zero. And from this equation here, we can get the expression of gamma. And as I have told you, this means, uh, or this is related with the sign of the uh, energy density of the stress energy tensor living in the shell. With this equation, we have three, uh, four, sorry, um, independent parameters, R sub zero, M minus, Q minus, and M plus. And therefore, to find the parameter space where this gamma is positive is very difficult. And therefore, we decided to define the following dimensionless variables. And also, from the junction condition uh, that needs to fulfill that the metric components have to be um, continuous across the shell, leads this relation between the model parameters. And substituting all these um, variables, we have this gamma here. And now it is more easy to find where this is possible or uh, positive or negative. And in particular, if we solve these polynomial um, equations, we find these two curves here, and gamma is positive between these two uh, orange and blue curves. Now, if we substitute this gamma back to this expansion that we have in this equation number five, at first order, we have this equation here, where gamma squared is this function here. And in order to have this bounded perturbation, this um, omega has to be greater than zero. And now, this in this plot, we can see that gamma greater than zero only happens below this blue curve. And therefore, there is no intersection between these two regions. And this means that we cannot have stable uh, bounded uh, amplitude perturbations with a warm hold, hold by positive matter sources. Therefore, we have to go one step further and consider two raised nostrum with different masses and different charges. Following the same uh, steps as before, but now using the extrinsic curvature of raised nostrum. And a part of these uh, dimensionless functions that we have defined before, we have to also define this um, charge ratio written here in equation number 14. The continuity of the metric leads this relation between the model parameters. And now the gamma and omega has to fulfill this form here. Now we have three, uh, three parameters and therefore our plot that we have seen before in two dimensions now is of three dimensions. But the lecture is the same. And this gamma will be greater than zero between these two surfaces. The orange one and the uh, blue one. And now omega squared will be positive below this orange surface, but also inside this strange thing that we have here, that is a uh, green surface and also purple one. And I decided to, to cut this uh, plot here because here you can see that this surface, blue surface cuts the green one and therefore we can see that there is an intersection between having a uh, positive energy densities and also bounded perturbations and with this picture it's really difficult to know uh, which are the limits of the parameters and therefore um, we have plotted this uh, plot here which is easier to know the limits of for example the ratio of charges and the dimensionless uh, shell radius. And this region here of orange, of, well, it indicates that gamma is positive and omega is also positive. So now that we have found that we can have this type of wormholes, and we want to know if we can find a double shadows, and this only happens when, for example, 
this shell of the radius is between the horizon and the photosphere radius of each side of the main pole in order to have traversable wormholes. So let's start by uh, finding the horizon radius in the Razor Nostrum space time, which is this equation number 18. If we solve it and we use the dimensionless uh, functions that we have used before, we find this value here. And on the other hand, we have the photosphere radius that can be found by solving this equation number 21. And with the dimensionless functions, give this thing here. In our paper, we have classified the region, but I think that here it is not the point because, as you can imagine, this thing is really difficult to <laughs> understand because there are a lot of parameters, and also this she here has to be substituted with this relation that we have found here in the question number 15. So therefore, the only thing that we will do is just go straight forward and, for example, consider that the charge, charge radio is 2. This means that the charge of the mainfold M plus is the double of the charge of the mainfold M minus. And this means that the shell radius has to be between these two blue values and this well, we can take a value which is 1.5, for example. And with this, we can um, constrain or find the limits of the dimensionless charge, this y here. And this is the plane that we have seen before that was uh, green. Sorry, not the plane, the surface. And this one is the surface, well, the blue surface. So substituting the values that we have seen before, the dimensionless charge has to be between these two values. And we take it, for example, to be 0 0.95. And this, when substituting all these values to these um, equations here, we find that uh, the horizon is below the radius shell and that this thing here, the horizon of the for M plus, does not exist because this uh, a square root is imaginary. And therefore, we can have, or this leads to a traversable wormhole. And then when substituting the photosphere, uh, the values in the photosphere radius, we have these values here. And what we can see is that they are greater than the um, for, uh, radius of the shell. So therefore, we will have these two spheres or these two shadows. Here is the potential of this case. And this means that, for example, if we have a photon of with a impact parameter below the maximum or the critical one, uh, sorry, greater, this means that will bounce back until it reaches the maximum and will start doing orbits around the wormhole through or the wormhole, sorry. When it is, uh, well, the impact parameter is uh, smaller, then the photon ray can cross this one whole throat and we'll find this other uh, potential barrier and we'll punch back again. Finally, when the impact parameter is even smaller than this critical one, the only thing that will do this photon is just cross through the other main fold. And this is why we can find this type of double shadows because depending on the parameter um, the a photon will bounce here with the blue curve or the orange one and here we have depicted the, the case when the impact parameter parameter is between these two critical ones and what happens is basically that a photon is traveling here in this main pool and plus gets inside the one pole throat and crosses to the main pole and minus goes around this uh, well and then again when it um, exits this uh, region here we will come back to the or it will come back to the main pole and plus so what we have checked is that we cannot have these uh, new predictions 
with sparse separation nostrum space times, since we cannot have this one host to be stable and have uh, positive matter sources or hold by mat positive matter sources. But when we generalize to two register nostrum, we can find that this thing can happen. And at least we have illustrated one example of having double shadows in this case. And thank you for your attention. Okay, uh, thank you, Merce. It was a very nice talk. Uh, anybody has any questions? Okay. Caio, please. Okay. Uh, so, sorry, can you go back to your slide? I didn't understand the. Yeah. the sorry. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> no. Okay. 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 It's just the, the picture of the geodesic entering the so this this black uh, part that you you draw in the, the the plot this is the what would be this outer radius right the the yeah so the this thing yeah this thing is the region that you have cut it if you we come back here to this plot here you can see that we cut both the uh, space times at one uh, radius and what we do is plug it. So this black region is this uh, uh, cutted region that we have here. Oh, okay. Okay. So this would be like the, the trolls of the wormhole or not? Yeah. Yes. The outer is the uh, wormhole throat radius. And also, I, I didn't understand when you, when you mentioned that uh, you have uh, double shadows. You are mm -hmm. referring to uh, basically is, is because you have these two impact parameters, right? But in the yeah. end, I mean, uh, w wouldn't the geodesics return? I mean, f from this, so suppose suppose that you send a, a light ray with an impact mm -hmm. parameter that is bigger than the this this blue peak here uh, that mm -hmm. you have in the plot. So wouldn't this go back in the end? So uh, can I call this a shadow? Because you see what I mean? I'm not sure if I understand you, but the idea is when you have a shadow is because, well, um, you can see the photons uh, up to here, this maximum here. Okay. Because from here, the only thing that they, the photons will do is just cross. Yeah, but but then it it hits in the in the other potential and goes back, yeah. no? Yeah, totally. Okay. And yeah. this is because these uh, maximums are in different heights, and therefore this effect is done two times. Hmm. Hmm. I have answered your question. No, yeah, it's just it's just because I I, I found that was a bit confused to call this uh, double shadow because because it's it seems that I, I had the idea that maybe depending on how you look you would see one or other situation yeah but but because if you have here this m minus while you are living here in this main flow you will ah, okay. see i see i see what i mean yeah I it depends on, yeah. the, on the on the side that you are i see i see what i mean yeah yeah, this is, yeah. now i understand your question yeah. Hmm. So it depends on the site, of course. Okay. Okay. So this would be the okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So any other questions for the speaker? No. Okay. Not. Okay. Yes. So Cecilia has a question. Do you see it, Merce, or should I? Okay, I will read it. So... I read it, I have to, well, this thing Don't happens. worry, I can read it for you, if you want. Okay. So, Cecilia is asking, or is saying, I don't understand where is the exotic matter here, if there's any. Just throw no. It. Okay. No. Okay, so what I want to say that is because uh, we are using modified gravity, in particular, uh, Palatini F of R gravity, 
we can have this warm hold by positive matter sources. The problem is that when we consider general relativity, this, or oh, well, in general relativity, this type of wormholes have to violate at some point the matter, uh, the energy conditions. And this is why we, we have said that we have qualitatively new predictions that we can have in general relativity because they have to violate the energy conditions. Okay, and also, uh, Cecilia was asking, the throat is inside of the radius of the shadow, isn't it? So, I mean, I, mean, I, I think she means the, the, the black part in the plot. Okay, um, here what I want to say is that the um, radius of the photon ring is related with the impact parameter, so has nothing to do with the wormhole throat. The wormhole throat, as have an, well, I have been asked before, um, is this uh, outer line here of the black region. And this is because the radius of the shell is the wormhole throat, wormhole throat radius. So I'm not sure if I have answered your question at all. Kayo is asking, would this be the X0? Mm, so, yeah. I, yeah, the I X here in the in your in your uh, upper plot. I mean, you have the this this vertical line in, with an X zero. Ah, X sub zero. It, yeah. Yeah. Is this the throat? Yeah. 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 So okay. as I have said, is the one whole throat and also the um, radius of the shell. This junction um, hypersurface is plugged here. So perhaps it is easier to have this out here. So this is the one hole throat, and it is also where we have cut it both the space times and plug it uh, together. Is so it, it's the same. Merce, I guess uh, it's differentiable there, right? And there's no need. We need to have the continuity of the metric, but the um, so you only, need, you, only, you need only continuity, but not uh, any kind of... Yeah. Okay. yeah, this is why we have to work with tensorial distribution, because these things happen. I see, okay. Yeah. Hmm. Um, okay, Cayo? Okay, if uh, nobody has a question, I, ha I have another one. So you, 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 you told us about the stability of these objects. By stability, what do you mean? Because, I mean, I imagine that, uh, for instance, in general relativity, you can always uh, find wormholes, but you have to, to impose some, uh, some strength properties for the matter. And also, mm -hmm. uh, these wormholes would be unstable, usually, to, to, uh, I mean, to perturbations, and they would close very quickly. In your case, how, what, what do you mean by instability? Instability? Do, do you uh, start perturbations in this space time? Or? Yes. Here, from this um, equation number two, we have the relation between the radius. In fact, the second derivative of the second time derivative of the radius, and also this uh, parameter here that was related with the energy. So what we do is isolate the second derivative and we expand. And we said that we want to have a bounded amplitude perturbations here. Hmm. And this is uh, having the omega greater uh, oh. So this is equation number 12. Okay. Where, sorry, this delta here is the radius of the shell minus the assume equilibrium point. So these these would be uh, radially stable, right? Or uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So I I have another question about related to the the way you glue the space time. So if the metric is not continuous in the throat, then. Uh, mm -hmm. The geodesic equation should not be well defined because uh, the Christopher symbols depend on derivative, on first derivatives of the metric. So if the geodesic equation is ill-defined in there, 
then you don't have uniqueness for geodesics that cross the throat. So I mean, when, whenever a geodesic reaches the throat, in order to be able to continue the trajectory, you have, do you have to specify an initial velocity again at the throat? Because the, in principle, the differential equation is not, uh, it does not satisfy the uniqueness um, theorem, let's say. Mm, I'm not sure to understand the question. You have said that if this if the derivatives of the matrix are not continuous, uh -huh. exactly. This, so, yeah. yeah. So let me reformulate. If you if you come from n minus, right, mm -hmm. and per geodesic, then you satisfy uh, the geodesic equation basically. When mm -hmm. you reach the throat, then the Christoffel symbols are not well defined there because the metric is not C one. It's not. It's not. The, 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 it does not have a well defined derivative. So if you don't have a well-defined Christoffel symbols, then you don't have a well-defined geodesic equation for geodesic observers. So how could you uh, continue the trajectories in a unique way? So let's say in a predictable way. I think that the point is that um, you don't need to have continuity. Yeah, well, I understand what you're saying. And if I have to be honest, I didn't thought about that so okay. I cannot tell you okay can, can I add something in this direction sure yes yeah I, I think we, we have the same the same problem with uh, spherical shells Asia because uh, in, in that case you use you, you have that the, this the metric is not continuous but you can still calculate the geodesic with no problem but I mean, you have uniqueness at the at the at the yeah shell. you do you you have you impose that the, the I mean you have to impose continuity at the shell exactly and I mean there's nothing wrong there I mean, but uh, I I think it I think it's the, the same way that you compute for instance when you find a Schrodinger equation with a, a continuous potential I mean it's a, the potential can uh, it may not be uh, continuous. Um, but uh, still, you can compute the geodesic with no problem. I see, but you, but but that the discontinuity you have to say impose initial conditions again. Of course, this yeah yeah at the shell at the shell you impose yeah yeah you impose okay. yeah. for instance you compute the integ you do the integration and at the shell you impose that the the, the velocity and the okay. and okay. the coordinates are continuous. Exactly. Um, so. I mean, mathematically, you have to add this condition. Of course, physically, I sure, guess sure. Uh, you won't have these discontinuous uh, cases. But this, uh, it's an idealistic model that, that is useful for understanding the properties. OK. Thank you, Gaio, for the clarification. So Haroldo has another question. Merce? Mm -hmm. Have you performed ray tracing techniques in the geometry? Gravitational lensing can present quite distinctive features depending on the side of the observer. Okay, um, I have to read because I have... Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure if I understand this question. Sorry. Okay. I think that you have so so can can you hear me yeah so my, my question is if you have performance ray tracing techniques i mean uh you have the this this uh ray tracing method which you, which you involves the geodesic equation from the from an observer uh which mm -hmm. can be in both sides of the of this wormhole and you you can see many aspects of the gravitational lensing. So have you have you done this? No, and it's something that it would be interesting to do. I, I, I see because I, I I think that you 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 obtain very different results depending on the on the side of the observer because you you can place the observer when anywhere. Yeah. So yeah, I think that this uh, is also a very interesting problem, and I think that 
and it has been recently done with another paper that does almost the same as we have done here, but only classifying these double shadows in general relativity, but they didn't talk about the stability of these type of objects, and even if they were held by exotic uh, matter sources. So we wanted to have a more general framework here to study the stability of these objects. But I think that in that case, um, some people have been studying the um, gravitational lensing of this type of object. So it's something that it can be done. Um, so, you any other question or maybe we should go with the next speaker? Okay. Okay, so let's so thank uh, Merce again for his uh, very nice talk. Did you want to say anything, Merce? Um, no. Oh, okay. Thank you for your attention and yeah, it has been a pleasure to okay. talk to you. Thank you for the talk.